Hello, my name is Lee Presser. This is my show. I speak frequently to very interesting people. Some of these conversations are so exciting, so intellectually stimulating, I thought others might like to listen in. This is the reason we started recording Conversation with Lee Presser. Welcome to Conversation with Lee Presser. About 32% of Missouri's population lives within the St. Louis area of the Missouri Department of Transportation, MoDOT. That's, uh, that means that Ed Hassinger, the St. Louis area district engineer, is responsible for the state and interstate highways regularly used by about a third of the people of Missouri. Now, Mr. Hassinger and his team are responsible for the driving public, maintaining more than 1,500 miles of the most critical roads. What most people have not been taught is that roads are like teeth. They must be regularly maintained or they'll start to rot. If a road misses its regular maintenance by as little as two or three years, the cost of that maintenance when finally performed will increase by 50 to 100 percent over what it would have cost if it had been done on time. Yet, the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission approved a plan on June 8th that includes reducing the size of the department staff by 1,200, closing 131 facilities, and selling more than 740 pieces of equipment. Today we're going to talk about saving the highway system from deterioration. Ed Hassinger, welcome to Conversation. Good to be here. So, evaluate what I just said. Is that, uh, is that true, that, uh, that missing those, uh, those regular maintenance do drive up costs? Oh yeah, having a, having a routine schedule of how we do maintenance on roads and bridges is critical for us to do it in the most efficient way. Okay, and that letting it go is just like your teeth all of a sudden you get a little spot that the dentist has to cut out. Right. But if you let it go too long, then you have to rip out all the way down to the bottom, to the roadbed, don't you? Yeah, it just costs more and, and takes more time and is more disruptive, I think, is the, is the key. Especially in an urban area, mm -hmm. disruptive is, is also something you got to think about. Mm -hmm. Now, normally when you're, uh, uh, when you're maintenancing a road, see, I've turned that into a verb, when you're maintenancing a road, how, what do you call it? What, what is, what's the proper engineering term for it? When you get those big things with the, the spinning, with the, it's got the teeth and it grinds the top of the, of the uh, surface of those concrete roads off? Yeah, I mean, we kind of go into to several different layers of maintenance. The biggest and most important one is preventive maintenance. And that's when we do things like seal up the cracks, put thin overlays on roads. You know, it goes a little longer, you get into the more destructive stuff that you're talking about with the with the big rotomills and taking out you know several inches of roadway and replacing it and if it gets farther than that we're talking about total replacement now you're when you do the rotomills um, you're retopping it now with blacktop you're, you're not putting concrete on top right it kind of depends on the road and actually in Missouri we competitively bid concrete against asphalt just to make sure that we always have the most competition and we get the best product and it really takes out the swings in the market. Hmm. So competing the, those two against each other really helps us get a better product for Missourians. I remember reading that uh, back in the days when they were first building these roads, there was a big, big controversy, concrete versus uh, asphalt, yeah. and concrete won. Most well, of the, the interstates were built with concrete. There, there is a huge lobby for both of those products, and in Missouri we've chosen to take the high road and say, you know what, they're both great products and we want the best price, so we're gonna compete them against each other. Now I think earlier, or one time when you were here, we talked about asphalt, and you said that actually it's, it's been fixed to the point where it, can, it, it has a service life similar to concrete now? Well, I think the, 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 the way that it works is, is that concrete probably costs more initially and will last longer, but asphalt, you know, with, a, with the right maintenance schedule, can be very competitive. So you, you have to do some, what I'll call preventive maintenance, maybe more often with that mm -hmm. product. But uh, we look at a life cycle cost of both. So let's get down to the real nuts and bolts here. Um, you've been with us on numerous occasions. I looked it up. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't count the number, but it's been a, a, a number of times. And during this time, over the past number of years, we've talked about, and you've warned about, how funding for MoDOT was going to be um, endangered. 
uh, at one time not too long ago, you, you were, your budget was like 1.2 billion or something, 1.3 billion somewhere in there for the state, and now it's going to be down closer to 600 million, isn't it? Right. The funds we have available for construction is two years ago for the really for the last five years has averaged about 1.2 billion a year. Right. This year it's going to be 600 million. And that's the result. And that of, includes maintenance, right? No, the, the, oh, that's, that's, that's that's funds available for construction okay. that we actually put out on the street for private industry to build the roads and okay. to maintain the roads. Um, what does it take to maintain what you've got across the state? It's about it's about that six hundred million dollar level. So really, what MoDOT is doing is we're going to go from a, a program that actually did a lot of things like improve congestion, improve safety do a lot of the things that people want mm -hmm. to, an, to an organization that will really be, be able to take care of the roads and probably just barely and only for about a five-year period because inflation eats us up and with all the things going on, we'll slowly lose ground. It's not going to happen overnight. You know, you're not going to see the roads go to, go to pot here in, in a year, mm -hmm. but what will happen is a slow deterioration of the roads and at $600 million, we believe that we can keep up with exactly what we've got. No additions, no new interchanges, no new bridges. Just just keep up with what we've got. Mm -hmm. And that's taken some fairly aggressive action on our part. Mm -hmm. We've taken all the machinery that we've got that delivered a $1.2 billion program and not needing all that, we said, you know what, we just gotta get rid of that. So it's people, it's equipment, it's buildings, um, we've taken everything that we're going to save from that, which is about $500 million over the next five years, and put it in the program. So it, even all those things that we're doing is not solving the problem. You know, if people want more, there's going to have to be a discussion about revenue for transportation. And right now, there is absolutely no interest in that subject that we can find anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had those discussions with state legislators uh, myself, as you know, mm -hmm. and uh, trying to warn them that this problem was coming, that they really needed to uh, do something quickly, but they didn't. And then, of course, the crash came, and that didn't help matters either. So, right. um, But your situation is not too different. I mean, it's, Missouri's not unique. Most other states are in similar conditions, aren't they? That's right. I mean, you look around the country and the Federal Highway Trust Fund is not able to support the levels of funding that traditionally have been done. We haven't had a... Explain a, what that is. Well, the, the trust fund is the 18 cent a gallon gas tax that everybody pays that goes into a big trust fund in Washington. Um, it is distributed out to the states based on a lot of formula things like how many miles of road you got and various things. And that's authorized on a six-year period. We have six-year bills. Mm -hmm. Well, the six-year bill that we were working under expired 18 months ago. So mm -hmm. we haven't had a highway bill for almost a year and a half now. And Hell, we haven't had a budget for a year. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's right. It's, it's nothing different than the other problems we're facing, but it really hampers an agency like ours about making commitments. If we know that the federal government's authorization to spend money runs out, in October of this year. They've extended it again. So we have money through October, but we don't know if we get any after that. So mm -hmm. we're not gonna make a commitment to a big project. We're not gonna make any commitments with that federal money past about October. And then there's a whole lot of uncertainty of what level government is gonna fund the federal transportation bill at. And you know that's, that's a real concern of ours because there's some people that say we want to make it 30% less than it is today. Mm -hmm. we, we would like to at least keep it where it is. Mm -hmm. And we know the needs would say you need to have more, but that's a whole debate that's going on with all this deficit debate right now. Now, you have said, not said, you're in the process of building a brand new bridge across the Mississippi River. Right. Is this funding crisis going to affect that construction process? Absolutely not. I mean, one of the things is when we obligate funds for a project, we make a commitment we're going to fund those. So the Mississippi River Bridge funding is in place. Um, it's in the bank. It's, 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 it's in the bank. The money's the there to pay the contractor. We've awarded contracts to contractors, um, and they're building it. So mm -hmm. actually, that project is going very well. 
Um, it's, it's out of the water if you've been over there recently and uh, it's right on schedule. Even with all the high water and floods and stuff, our contractors have done a great job. Mm -hmm. Now that bridge, because of funding difficulties, is not going to be built as the design was first envisioned, is it? Yeah, we envisioned an eight lane bridge across the river. Um, really, what we've done is we've, we've pared that back because of funding realities to mm -hmm. a four lane bridge. Two, two, two each lanes way. each direction. Mm -hmm. It will be expandable to six by restriping the bridge later if we need it. But the four lanes will take the traffic um, that, that'll, the demand that'll be there, we project for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. Then we'll be able to restripe the bridge to six to gain a little more time. And we've designed the bridge so that we can build the companion structure right next to it if in 50 years we need that capacity. So we, we kind of took the best approach we could with the money we have. And you know then it'll require some changes on both Illinois and Missouri's part on how it connects if we ever need to do that. I'm still waiting for my George Jetson uh, suitcase car. Then we want, <laughs> and we wouldn't need those roads, but uh, I guess the younger people don't know what I'm talking about. But um, I'm frustrated. I have great concerns. I mean, I look at, um, I think infrastructure is one of the most important things that governments do. Uh, it's the thing that they do that individuals can't do for themselves. And yet the, uh, the institutions uh, the, the political institutions don't see it that way. They don't seem to understand that uh, all the stuff that comes to Schnucks, to Deerbergs, uh, to Shop and Save, to Walmart, all came across a highway, most, most of it. I mean, some by train, but mostly by highway. And that the longer it takes for that stuff to get there, the more expensive it costs to uh, folks who are buying from those stores. Yeah, and I think MoDOT has taken the position that we are we're an implementing agency, so we're going to take the money we get and we're going to do the best job we right. can. So we don't, we don't become the issue. We're going to deliver projects. We're going to do it in a very efficient manner. The actions we're taking right now are really in that vein. You wouldn't see a lot of government agencies doing this by their own free will. You know, it's usually forced. Um, we've taken a more aggressive approach to that and said we got to make the changes. We're going to do it before somebody makes us do it. Mm -hmm. um, but everything that we've done shows that on infrastructure and particularly transportation infrastructure, that investment is about a four to one cost benefit. You know, we have examples all around the region that say, hey, build the interchange and jobs follow that. And mm -hmm. we're not talking about, you know, retail jobs, we're talking about real jobs. Our industry supports about 17,000 jobs across the state of Missouri. Mm -hmm. And those are the direct jobs, not, you know, the ones that kind of fall off through that process. So transportation is right. important. Well, okay. Um, I'm going to talk about one thing in Illinois, then I'm going to come back to talk about this idea of building a road and interstates into South County from, I guess it's from 64 or maybe from 44. I, I, you'll have to describe that mm -hmm. to me. But... What I was going to say about Illinois is that there has been talk of building a road from uh, basically from Alton up to Jacksonville, an interstate highway. And the reason is to open up that whole, uh, that whole side, the western side of, uh, of Illinois to uh, future development. And uh, everybody agrees that if that road is built, there's going to be a lot of development. So your point is well taken that that uh, when you build roads where trucks and cars can go, there'll be more, uh, more houses built, more industries built in those areas. Right. So having said that political statement, now let's move on to the technical. What, what is this road that you're talking about building? And of course, people are objecting to. Well, the, the, the actually the South County Connector is a, is a county-led initiative, but MoDOT, of course, is involved because we own the roads on both ends of it. Right. But many years ago, the idea was that 170 would basically continue south and connect uh, I-64 to I-64. So they I built that shopping center in the way. Right. So the, the, just the reality of what happened, and there wasn't political support uh -huh. to continue I-170 south. Right. Um, at the time, maybe a good decision in hindsight 
terrible decision. Right. If we would have continued 170. It was a terrible decision when they made it. I, I'm sorry. Um, you, you can't say that. I can't. It was a terrible decision. So, so anyway, I think people have realized that most of the people that actually live in the southern part of St. Louis County and Jefferson County, the job centers are north. They're up around the airport. They're in Clayton. They're in the city. So there's a huge demand for people that live south to go north. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the, that's why 270 is congested every morning and every evening is people because coming around. that's where people go. They either got to go 55 through the city or 270 around the outside. And so that demand is there, but we don't have the luxury of building an interstate. You know, we're not going to do that. That's already been decided, not going to do it. So um, the county's working on a study right now to figure out how do you replace that capacity? And the idea that they're looking at is there's three major roads that connect those areas. And they're looking at what do we do to Big Bend? What do we do to Brentwood? What do we do to Hanley? And so they've come up with a bunch of alternatives. And of course, all those end in connecting that to, to 44 at some point mm -hmm. and to the Metrolink station and trying to put all those modes together. And of course, you know, any one of those options has a lot of opponents either for you know, in my backyard reasons or for other reasons. And it's never easy to try to figure out what to do with, with transportation. So we're in that process. The oh, county's how far getting, along are you in that process? Well, well the county has, has got the alternatives laid out and in the process of getting input, I'm sure there'll be a lot more of that to come. And then of course, we'll probably land on some kind of option that can gain political and regional support. And then we, we face the challenge of how do you fund it, regardless so of how Saint, they come. St. Louis County is going to present its alternatives to you. It's it's well, it's it's road it, base. Well, it'll be it'll be presented to the East West Gateway Council of Governments, which mm -hmm. is the decision making body of where we spend money and how we plan our roadways. When you say we, you mean MoDOT? Mo, well, MoDOT is involved, but it's not just MoDOT. It's it's where do we fin spend the federal money that goes to cities and counties. It's where do we spend the money that's spent on, on transit, mm -hmm. rail, anything goes through that body. And this body is again? It's the East West Gateway Council of Governments. Okay. It's, it's who, who are these people, just so that folks know? Yeah, it's, it's a metropolitan planning organization that's put in place by the, by the federal transportation bill that says federal money has to go through one of these entities to, to make sure we're planning for good transportation. Mm -hmm. The board of directors is made up of, of local um, elected officials from both Illinois and Missouri, mm -hmm. and then they are the they are the decision makers on where we spend our our federal funds. And currently, who chairs this? Um, I believe the chair is uh, Mark Kern from Illinois. Oh, really? I believe. Now that may I didn't just, mean to throw that. Yeah, I, I, out he, there. He, or he recently was the chair, if not the chair right now. Mm -hmm. And what other names that people would know are on on this body? Um, Alan Dunstan. Uh, Mayor Slay, County Executive Dooley, County Executive Elman. Um, there's some citizens at large. Um, it, it's a body of... So know, it really is a political organization. I mean, it, it's, it's the, the leaders of various uh, uh, political subdivisions. Yeah, it's local elected officials that are, that are tasked with the decision making, backed up by a professional staff mm -hmm. that, that is, is the planners that actually work on trying to get the, the options in front of that board. So approximately where are the, is this road, would you think that it's going to run to from? You know, I don't know. I think the combination, it'll be a combination of things. We're not going to build a new road. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to use the roads we have and try to enhance them in a way that they move traffic better. Like which roads are we referring to? Brentwood, Hanley, Big Bend. Oh, the ones that you mentioned The earlier. ones I mentioned. So you're talking about widening them? and Those are some of the options. And to try to make them have better connections Probably it'll involve some kind of an interchange on I-44. Mm -hmm. You know, we currently have all the interchanges on 64 rebuilt at those roads to handle more traffic. I mean, Brentwood is not the fastest road in the world if, yeah. for anybody who's driven on, especially when you get anywhere close to 40, it really slows down. Yeah. And these aren't going to be interstate highways. We're talking about right. using the roads we have to move the traffic that demands to go to those places. See, it was a bad decision about not building 270. <laughs> south because now you're having to sort of ham hand it 170 would have been a much more um, 
elegant solution to that problem, you bet. So what else, uh, what else is MoDOT thinking about? Well, I think right now MoDOT's in the middle of the transition of how we're going to reorganize ourselves and, and make sure that we can deliver the product with 1,200 less employees. And mm -hmm. um, that's, that's taken up a lot of our time today. Um, but we are moving to the future. I want to say one thing. You guys did an, such an excellent job on the, on the Highway 4064 project. Uh, it, it doesn't get said enough how well that went. Yeah, it did. It went really well. And it took a lot of effort on our part, but also a lot of effort on our partners' part. You know, the county had to come to the table, the city had to come to the table, and they all did the things we needed to do. And I think that's a real good example of regional cooperation actually producing something that's really good. Mm -hmm. And it couldn't have happened without that, you know. So I, I think that's a, a kind of a model of how we need to do business. And we're trying to make that happen more often, so. Um. Well, well, MoDOT, I mean, over the time that you and I have known each other, we, we've, we've talked about how MoDOT got some black eye from making promises in the past that they, that they didn't fulfill on. You bet. And had a tough time with the public, but I think finally the public's now on your side. They've seen, you know, they've seen the work that you've done with the 40 Project and other projects like uh, the interchange of uh, 270, 170. Mm -hmm. That project uh, where you built that new uh, on-ramp after that disastrous uh, accident that right. occurred there, um, you know, that went really, really well. So I think the public's on your side now. I'm hoping that they don't lose heart. I think that's what we're working on next. The, the thing that we've got to do is, is put before Missourians, because in Missouri, nobody can make a decision about raising revenue except the voters. You know, the legislature can't do it. We can't do it. Um, we have the Hancock Amendment, which says voters have to say yes. And so what, what MoDOT with our partners has to do is create what is the compelling vision for transportation in Missouri. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be something they want. You know, taking care of roads and bridges is something that a lot of people want. They say that's their first priority. But there's a lot of people that want us to invest in multimodal connections to the river. For instance, in St. Mm -hmm. Louis, we have a great advantage with the Mississippi River sitting out beside our door here mm -hmm. and could be a huge boon for, for Missouri if we do the right things and invest in the right things. We need to talk about what we need to do with the interstate highway system for the next 50 years. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to work with everybody involved to get a compelling vision of what that is. And then it's going to have to be put in front of the voters. And, and nobody has any illusions that the voters today are going to pass anything. The economy's too bad. There's too many bad things going on. But, you know, that'll change. And a year from now, two years from now, I don't know when it is, but we need a compelling idea of what transportation mm -hmm. will do for people. And that's what we're working on, actually. We're starting the process to work with people to say, what is that? You know, and, and then we'll work on educating people about it and working with business community and see if, if there's an interest. And if there's not, MoDOT's going to take care of the roads we got, and that's what we'll have the money to do. Yeah, that's all you got. That's right? all we got. So, so, <laughs> so. The, this, the formula's pretty simple. You know, yeah. it's really not um, anything too complicated. We just know what the reality is, and the things we're doing right now are, are to be, <laughs> be real about what the situation is and not make promises we can't keep. We got about five minutes left here and um, normally at this part you know, I'll, I'll give the guests the opportunity to talk about you know if we haven't covered something go ahead but I wanted to ask before we get into that part is describe for people one more time this connection between uh, this new connection between St. Charles County and uh, I guess it's St. Charles County and St. Louis County via 141 off of 70. Um, well, we, no, actually we're, we're working on the, um, as part of the stimulus money that we got, we were able to do two really good things that um, kind of work together. Okay. We were able to finish 141 from basically where it ends at 40 all the way up to Earth City Expressway. That, that is under contract right now by MoDOT and then the piece is under contract by the county. Right. That connects to Page Avenue which goes basically from, you know. To oh, so it's going to hook into the bridge that was built across. It'll the go across there. the river. Got it to 94. 
to 94, and we're also able to upgrade 94 to a freeway, basically all the way down to uh, Mid Rivers Mall Drive. Got it. And those two projects together are really going to help. And we just opened the new ramp that goes from 270 to Page Avenue last week. Mm -hmm. So all those things together are going to make moving around um, in that area much more attractive. There's a huge amount of area out there that's probably going to be um, ripe for development. And kind of we talk about infrastructure being important. Mm -hmm. Without 141, without Page Avenue, um, that wouldn't happen. So this 141 money, that money's in the bank? Yes. The other part of turning the, um, uh, the 94 to uh, Mid Rivers Mall, is that in the in bank? bank. It's under construction right oh. now, and both those will be done July next year. Okay. All right, so you got about two, two and a half minutes to tell me what else is going on that I haven't asked you about, if there is such a thing. Well, I think we've kind of talked about a lot of the things that are going on, but I think the, you know, one of the things we're also really working on is trying to make sure that we're communicating really well with the people that use our roads. And we have, you know, a real big effort in trying to make sure that when we work on the roads, we do that at night or on the weekends. So mm -hmm. around here, you're seeing every weekend, we're doing a lot of work. Tearing down bridges. Tearing down bridges, yeah. um, you know, repaving roads, doing all kinds of work. And one thing that people can do to make their life easier is to make sure they check our website and talk with us about what's going on so they don't get caught in that. Because we, we really are trying to do our work at the times when it's the least inconvenience to the public. Channel 2 and Channel 5 do a pretty good job, too. Of, and and of, we work, of we work really closely with the media to make sure they've got the right information, because that's one of our great outlets to get to people. We have a website. You can sign up for alerts with us. Mm -hmm. So if your route to go somewhere is I-44 or I-55, we'll send you an alert when we're working on, you know, through your cell phone or whatever you use to tell you when we're in that area. And, you know, mm -hmm. people can make their life better by using some of this new technology. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to really work with people to make sure that they can utilize our system the best they can. And I think that's a, a coming initiative that we're going to be working more on because those things don't cost a lot of money. They take effort and they take technology. But it's not like building a new road. And if we can get the most out of our roads through some of the technology things we're doing, That'll help us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you about one other piece of infrastructure, but it's kind of flown out the window here. Um, so there was a, um, there was an area of highway. Oh yes, I know what it is. Uh, you, I was going to ask you about I seventy. There was talk when there was money about rebuilding Interstate 70 from uh, St. Charles County out to uh, Kansas City. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any chance of that in the near future, or that's, that's just out the window? We have the studies, but in t unless there's more money, that's a three to four billion dollar project, and with no money, that's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that that's uh, about it for today. I do appreciate your coming in and, and uh, telling people what the, the situation is with MoDOT. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great to be here. And to my audience, I've been speaking with Ed Hassinger. He's the St. Louis Area District Engineer for the Missouri Department of Transportation, MoDOT, as you know them. Uh, they've been doing a great job. Now they have a lot less money, but they're going to do the best they can for you. Thank you very much. See you next week.